Well, happy Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2021. And we're at home for church, which is really fine, but it's a little different. We've had a good uh, eight to 10 inches of snow in the last few days. Our temperatures have been well below zero, and even this Sunday morning, it's going to be negative six or negative eight, depending on which report you look at. So we decided that we would do YouTube church and stay home in the warmth of our houses. So I'm glad to be with you, and I'm glad to join you on Valentine's Day. So Valentine's Day, you know I love to think about that, <clears throat> love month and different things that go on, and how we tell people we love them and how we feel about them. So I was thinking about that. One of the things that we always hear around Valentine's is these songs, love songs. So I thought, got to thinking, I'd look up what some of the famous old love songs we know. Well, some of them didn't seem like they were so old to me because I guess they're songs I've known for a few years, but you know, they're not old. Because I'm not that old, but maybe I am. 34 years this year with my girlfriend and I, and uh, I love her. And so, Valentine's, what's it all about? Well, we've been in Deuteronomy talking about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. Moses gave those words to us, and um, I know... They are so important, most important words in the Bible. Not only does Moses tell us to love God, but God says, I love you. He said it in a variety of ways. He said it when he sent his son Jesus to this earth. He said, for God so loved the world. We know those verses. We know throughout lots of verses with love in them. And we'll talk about them in a little bit. So back to these love songs to see if any of these are familiar with you. So I'm looking at them on the computer so you got a little glare in your eyes. I will always love you by Whitney Houston. Remember that? And I will always... Anyway, I can't help falling in love with you with Elvis Presley. In 1961, he sang that song. My heart will go on Celine Dion singing that song. Your Song by Elton John. This is your song. I Don't Want to Miss a Thing with You, Aerosmith in 1998. Endless Love, Lionel Richie in 2014. Just the Way You Are with Bruno Mars, if you know him. He's kind of a new guy to me. Time After Time, old crazy old Cindy Lauper. Remember her with her weird hairdos? Oh, let's see what else we got here. My Girl by The Temptations. You know that song. Um, I Want to Know What Love Is by Foreigner, 1984. By the way, that was the year I graduated from high school. Just a thought. It was a long time ago already. To Make You Feel My Love with Adele. Bleeding Love. Yeah, I mean, we could go on and on and on. I'm just looking through this list of how many endless songs there are that talk about the best of my love by emotion, crazy for you, thinking about you. Let's see. This list just goes on and on and on. I'll stand by you because you love me. I'm yours. Vision of love. Baby love. Ain't no mountain high enough. Remember that crazy song? Uh, I'll Be There by the Jackson 5. The Power Love. They had that song when we watched that old show, Back to the Future. Remember that? The Power of Love by Huey Lewis. You know, it's just amazing. Songs are on and on and on, and endless they go. And... Kind of fun to think about that stuff, isn't it? It's kind of fun to reflect back a long time ago and think about what life was, where I was, and what love meant to me. 
talked to briefly about it last Sunday in church. We talked about how our love changes over the years. My love as a young boy and how I love my mom and dad. And then I love my sisters. Kind of. I'm winking a little. You know what that means. And then I love some other people in my world. And then I had my first love in high school. And then love in college. And then I fell in love with my girlfriend. And we got married. And then we had children and we loved them. And love parents and now we love our grandchildren and how love changes over the years it never stays the same and how we can have the capacity to love so many different people like I love you like I love people from so many different places from South Dakota to Michigan to Iowa to Florida to Arizona people all over the country I just love you and uh, it doesn't mean we have to talk all the time and communicate, communicate all the time, but we know that we love each other. And I like that a lot. So, Bible verses I have in my mind today. I'm going to stray from Deuteronomy for a few, for just this Sunday. Next Sunday we're going to have communion in church, though. That'll be nice. John is one of our writers in the Bible that talks about loving God a lot. So the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 15. He quotes what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. If you love me, you will obey what I command. How true that is. So... I got to thinking about that and looked it up a little more. And I knew that there was another verse in the Bible that talked about this. And sure enough, it was good old John. He wrote it himself again. John wrote this in 1 John, his letter. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. He writes, This is love for God. So do I love God? Yes, I do. But here's what I will do if I love God. I will... If uh, this is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not a burden. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, we say it every Sunday in church. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen? And everybody says, Amen. We will overcome the world. We will be with God. This is love for God. is to f obey His commands, and they are not a burden. You know, the last couple of days, it's been pretty cold out. You know that. And we've been trying to take care of cows like many of the guys around the area or the farm or the ranchers are trying to take care of their cows and keep them in. Well, a few of mine discovered that the electric fence wasn't that hot. And so the other day when there was some wind and cold, they, they crossed the electric fence and they went into the trees behind the house. And they thought they were pretty cool hiding out in the trees. Well, then the next day they started coming into the yard. And then they started going out on the road. And then they started going across the road. And then they got into Stewart's stuff. And then they got over into Dave and Amy's stuff. And they got into Wayne's stuff. So we're chasing these cows around. The other night, I'm out there trying to chase the cows by myself, get the fence put back up, get some feed out to them. And finally I said, why am I such an idiot? And why don't these cows obey me? Why don't they do what I want them to do? And I came to this wonderful conclusion. They must not love me. My own cows, they don't even love me. All they want is my feed. <sighs> if we love God, we should obey Him. And obeying Him should not be a burden. If the cows love me, 
They would stay in the fence. They would eat the feed that I put out for them. And it would not be a burden for them. They would be happy to stay there, quite content. Well, when you're related to cows, it kind of sounds kind of stupid, doesn't it? But in the same way, we as people, a lot of times, we struggle with asking the question, why aren't people doing what I would like them to do? Why don't my children act the way I want them to act? Why don't people who I give advice to or counsel or people I help, why don't they do what I think is good for them? Why don't the kids at school sit down, be quiet, and do what their work? Why don't they take care of these things? Why, 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 why do we ask these questions? But the reality is they don't love us. The people that we're trying to help and the typical thing is that they love themselves more than they love anyone else. It's true of the kids at school. They, they don't love us as much as they love themselves. So they're going to keep doing what they want to do. And I offer them something because I love them. I offer them work. I offer them knowledge. I offer them help. With you, each other, for us, we offer each other these things. And sometimes... We still don't do what somebody gives good advice to do. And you have to say, it must not love you. And that's true. Love is a tricky battle when it comes to obeying somebody else's words. See, obey is a, another tricky word we don't use very much in society anymore because it had this bad connotation. I asked you to do something and you should obey me. Obey. See, it sounds terrible. But the truth is, when God asks us to obey his commands, if you'll remember a few weeks ago when we talked in Deuteronomy, we were looking at the verses in Deuteronomy and one of them finally said that little hint that God is asking us to obey his commands and do what he says because it is good for us. You see, if I'm asking you to obey me, just because I want you to do what I want, that's really not love. But if I'm asking you to obey me because I'm telling you to do something that is good for you, and you do it, it shouldn't be a burden, and it means I love you. So, how do you understand? How do you understand? Do you love God? Then keep his commands. It's really that simple. But it's hard to keep the commands, isn't it? The moral law. Don't lie, don't steal, don't kill. Don't do all these things that the Ten Commandments tell us to. And then when we go to the book of Deuteronomy and we listen to all of these things, it's it's hard. Just because it's not what I want to do. But God says, it's good for you. So, John asks this question. If you love God, then you keep his commands, and they're not a burden to you. When I was a boy, sometimes it was a burden to keep the commands, to obey my father and mother. It was a burden and a pain because I didn't want to. I didn't want to clean the hog pen. I didn't want to clean the chicken pen. I didn't want to clean the house, my room, my dishes. I didn't want to do some of that stuff. And besides, my sisters, they had more to do with that than I should. But I did help on the farm, and I did do it. And now I go out and I find that I really enjoy doing some of those activities because it's so rewarding. It's not a burden. So, is keeping God's commands a burden for us? If it's a burden, then maybe we need to check our hearts and say, do I, do I love God? How much do I love God? And by loving God, what am I showing the rest of the world how am I showing my love for God to others and am I helping others know God's love for them I know sometimes it's hard to think about it this is love for God this is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not a burden. This is love for God.
So it's Valentine's Day. So I went to the store. Shh, don't tell my sweetie. I got a surprise her. I found these Ruffle Stover's toffee chocolates. See them? I thought, I like toffee. And if I give them to my girlfriend, she might share with me. Am I going to tell her she has to share with me? So she has to obey me? It's not really that much fun. I'd rather her just offer me a toffee in return for me giving it to her. And then she would show her love for me while I have demonstrated my love for her by giving her toffee chocolates. So this is an opportunity for my girlfriend to say that she loves me while I'm telling her that I love her. Now what if she doesn't give me a toffee? What if she keeps it all for herself and I don't get any back? Maybe she really doesn't love me that much. Or is she just accepting my love for her? And so I'm really happy because she's received my love. But I'm not that happy because I want her to love me back because I want some toffee also. Am I trying to manipulate her? This love thing is crazy, isn't it? So, I'm going to give her the toffee. No strings attached. If she wants to give me some, fine. I love her, and I know that she loves me. We'll just leave it at that. So then I went looking for another thing that's favorite to her. One of the things that she loves is dark chocolate. Now, it's not quite the wrapper I want, and it's not quite the size I had hoped to find. So I ended up getting two of them. Now, I don't like Dove dark chocolate very much. I just don't care for dark chocolate. It's kind of bitter to me and I don't really like it that well. So when I give her this, I'm hoping she'll know how much I love her, but she won't offer me any back. And hopefully I've communicated that well enough through the years that she would know that I don't really like it. So I don't want it. So if she offers it to me, then she's trying to give her love back to me. And I say, no, thank you. I don't really like it. Then I'm telling her, I don't want her love back. How confusing is this? Tell you what, I'm going to give her the dark chocolate. No strings attached. She can just have it. And if she wants to offer me some back, I'll just say, no, thanks, baby. I love you. But not the chocolate. So I got these two obstacles. One's dark chocolate, no thanks. One's toffee, yeah, I hope so. I want some, I don't want some. What a confusing thing love can be. How crazy is that? My girlfriend's amazing. My honey and I have been together a long time. 34 years this coming August and we, we're okay. Chocolate's not the end of the world, right? But I did get her a card. And I thought, maybe you should see this card before I give it to her. Ooh. So this card is kind of fun. The card says, Can you read that? My girlfriend. My girlfriend. Have I told you lately that you're amazing? Because you are. That's what the card says. That's what the card says. Have I shown you how happy you make me? Question mark. Because you do. That's the answer. Have I mentioned how lucky I am that you're my girlfriend? Because I am. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Now what should I write in the card? Oh boy, the mystery of love and Valentine's, it's all oh, 34 Valentine's we've been together. 34 of them. What, what can I possibly say that would be original? I love you? Is it enough? I'm just going to go with it again. I'm going to give the chocolate, I'm going to give the toffee, 
and I'm going to write some nice words in the card. And my honey will know. Because I told her every day, I love you. Every day for 34 years, I love you. So, it's not a burden. So, it's kind of the way that God is asking us to love him. Keep his commands and don't make a burden out of them. Follow God's wishes for our lives and don't let it be a hassle or pain. But be joyful that we get to do that. When we show our love to those around us this weekend and Valentine's, it's a way of just saying, I do love you. Yes, I know it's a Hallmark holiday and all of that stuff, but I really do love you. And this is just one of those times where I get to find a weird card for my girlfriend and some chocolates and some toffee. And we get to celebrate our love. For some of you, this Valentine's is the first one in a long, long time that you have not been with your sweetheart. And I want to tell you I'm sorry. I'm sorry that they've gone away without you. I'm not sorry that they went to heaven to be with Jesus. But I'm sorry that you're without them this Valentine's. Know that our hearts are with you as well. Some of you have had broken relationships and love doesn't seem so sweet. It doesn't seem so wonderful. But God is still asking us to keep his commands. Why? Because it's good for us. No greater love than that a friend should lay down his life for you. And that's what Jesus did. So even if the romance has gone out of love or your lover, your longtime spouse has gone home to be with Jesus, know that God loves you and I love you and people around us still love you. And Valentine's, yeah, it's a Hallmark holiday. But it's a time to think about who do I love and how do I show it and how do I tell it. God loves you. I hope you can find five or six people that you say to them this week, I love you and God loves you. The word love should always be in our tongues as often as it can be and share it with everyone around you. At some level, some people I love more, some people I love as neighbors, some people I love as friends, some people are family, but I love God and his commandments. Still once in a while are hard, but they're not a burden. Happy Valentine's Day. I want to pray for us. Father in heaven, thank you for being with us. Thank you for sending your son to us to show greatest love in the whole world that we could ever experience. And I pray for my church family all over the country. I pray for them in Wagner, South Dakota on these cold winter days. I pray for them in Minnesota on cold winter days. I pray for them in Ohio and in Michigan. I pray for them in Arizona and Colorado. I pray for them in Nebraska and Wyoming. I pray for my church family. Or wherever else you may be watching, I just pray for you that you experience God's love in a special way this week. And not the blessings necessarily of chocolate and toffee and a card, but the blessings of knowing that God is touching your life and helping you. So Father, please do that. Please do that. I pray for my church family. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. I'm going to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, maybe take a few minutes tomorrow and listen to some of your favorite old love songs, some old hymns, Love Lifted Me and How Great Thou Art, and some great songs, even church songs. And think about how much God loves you. Maybe send a reminder to somebody you haven't talked to for a while and remind them how much you love them. It's a good opportunity. So I hope you can enjoy. Stay warm. Be safe. And don't worry. The snow will melt soon enough. Probably by next weekend. God bless you. I love you. And God loves you.